Hey writers, welcome back to our series on comma rules for Lackawanna College's Writing Center. Today we are going to look at using commas after an introductory clause or phrase. So as we begin, let's look what an introductory phrase or clause is. An introductory phrase or clause is a dependent phrase or clause that begins a sentence. It comes before an independent clause, which is otherwise basically just a sentence. It can stand on its own. And the dependent phrase or clause would be a fragment on its own, meaning that it does not contain the elements required to be a sentence, meaning subject, verb, and complete thought. The rule is that you place a comma after an introductory clause or phrase before the independent clause. You do not, however, place just a comma between two independent clauses. That's called a comma splice, and you can learn all about those in the series on run-on sentences. Let's look at phrases to begin with. Phrases never have a subject or a verb. Types of phrases include prepositional phrases, infinitive phrases, positive phrases, and participle phrases. Now, I don't want you to get too hung up on knowing which type of phrase is which for this lesson, but let's review some examples anyway. Here we have a sentence starting with a prepositional phrase. Before emailing her professor, comma, Eric checked the directions for his assignment. On the right-hand side of that comma, we have our subject, Eric. We have our verb, checked. And on the left-hand side, before emailing her professor, we have a phrase that would be a fragment on its own. And on the right-hand side, we have what would be a complete sentence, meaning we can put that comma to split the two up. Our second example shows the same idea using an infinitive phrase. To achieve high scores, students should study well before an exam. On the left-hand side, to achieve high scores, we have a phrase. It would be a fragment if you just ended the sentence there. And on the right-hand side, we have our subject in blue, our verb in orange, and we have a complete thought that can exist without that part on the left. So this is why we can split these two with a comma. Let's look at an example of a phrase using a positives. Now, a positive is describe the noun that's closest to it. Athletic and strong, comma, Travis beat his previous lifting record. Here we have once again on the left, a phrase that cannot stand on its own. And on the right, we have our subject Travis, our verb beat, and we have a complete thought, independent sentence or clause on its own, which again is why we split the two with a comma. Here we have an example of a participle phrase. A little hint here, usually when you have a sentence starting with an ing word, it usually indicates that you have a, an introductory phrase. Here we have running late for class, comma, Sarah didn't have time to grab her usual coffee. Again, on the left, we have a phrase. It would not be able to stand on its own. And on the right, we have our subject, Sarah, our verb didn't have, and a complete thought, which again is why we split it with a comma. Now let's look at splitting an introductory clause with an independent clause. Clauses, unlike phrases, do have a subject and a verb. However, they are still fragments. So an independent clause is a complete thought and a complete sentence on its own. A dependent clause, however, is not a complete thought and is a fragment on its own. So going back to what I just said, pardon me, an introductory clause has a subject and verb, but is still a fragment. So let's look at a sentence that combines a dependent and an independent clause. Here we have, when Alex arrived back home, comma, he changed into sweatpants. Well, on the left-hand side, unlike our phrases, we have a subject, Alex, 
and a verb arrived. Also on the right hand side of that comma, we have a subject he, a verb changed. However, on the left, that word when makes that a dependent clause because you could not have when Alex arrived back home on its own. It wouldn't make sense. You need more context. On the right hand side, however, you do have an independent clause or a complete sentence. This is why we can split the two with just a comma. Let's look at an example when you wouldn't split it with just a comma. If we take that word when out of the front, we have two independent clauses. Alex, subject, arrived, verb, back home, comma. He, subject, changed, verb, into sweatpants. Here we have two independent clauses, which would equal a comma splice. So beware, a lot of times adding a word to the front is what makes it an introductory or dependent clause. The bottom line with all of that lingo is basically to use a comma after an introductory phrase or clause before an independent clause. What does that mean? Ultimately, if the first part is a fragment, the add the comma if the second part is a sentence. For more on comma splices to see when you wouldn't split with a comma, please see our video identifying run-on sentences. And as always, check out the Writing Center if you need a little extra one-on-one -on -one help. Or if you want to review any of our other videos, head back to the channel. Happy writing, everyone.